Hello and welcome to the Monday, December 11th, 2023 edition of the Sands and its Storm Center's Stormcast. My name is Johannes Ulrich and I'm recording from Washington, D.C. Let's take a look at diaries from this weekend. Didier published a diary with a URL we received from a reader that showed a somewhat interesting host name, starting with colon colon FFFF colon and then an IPv4 address. This particular notation does show up if IPv4 addresses are mapped into the IPv6 address space, starting with colon colon, which means all zeros, then the four Fs, and the last 32 bits of the IP address are the IPv4 address, which is then displayed for convenience in the decimal notation, not hexadecimal as you usually see with IPv6 addresses. This format I've really only seen being used in some Linux distributions, for example, if you're running Netstat. And the purpose of this is if your operating system or really the software that uh, accepts the connection is essentially using IPv6 only. That way, the operating system sort of rewrites IP addresses into this pseudo IPv6 format. These are not addresses that you ever should see on the network. And I'm actually a little bit doubtful if this will work in the URL like this. Typically, there should be at least like square brackets around it for an IPv6 address, but it isn't really an IPv6 address because the last four bytes are in decimal. I tried it here on my Mac quickly and it didn't really seem to work. It basically thought it was a host name and of course it didn't resolve it. This could very much be just a bug actually in the attack script that uh, somehow creates uh, these malformed IP addresses, for example, by pulling them out of a Netstat to kind of figure out, you know, what the other site's IP address is or what the local IP address is. So maybe a buggy piece of software. If you have any more insight, uh, well, uh, let me know. Let me continue to have uh, great posts from our Internet Storm Center interns. These are participants of uh, the sans.edu bachelor uh, program. Latest one is from Nicholas Haney. Guy, the mentor here in this case, posted it uh, for Nicholas. Great little post uh, showing kind of the value that they derived uh, from the honeypot. So if you're interested, uh, take a look, please. It was just uh, last week that uh, at the dog park, actually, someone uh, was asking about wireless keyboards and uh, vulnerabilities there. We all know about the good old sort of USB uh, receiver based wireless keyboards that sort of used a simple one byte XOR encryption key that was trivial uh, to break. And that was sort of thought to be somewhat less of an issue for Bluetooth uh, keyboards, because after all, Bluetooth has a uh, reasonable good encryption uh, algorithm and so associated with it. Well, it uh, looks like that's not quite the case, according to Mark Newland, who did release an advisory stating that uh, he found a number of vulnerabilities, actually one vulnerability affecting uh, multiple different Bluetooth stacks that allow an hacker to pair a keyboard with a system without any user interaction. Typically, when you pair a new device, uh, you need to at least uh, press a button, sometimes confirm a pairing code or something like this. Due to implementation issues uh, in these Bluetooth stacks that pretty much affect everything sort of Linux, uh, Android, and Mac OS related, no confirmation is required and that hacker is able to pair a keyboard and with that inject keystrokes. Now there are some uh, constraints here. The device has to be in pairing mode, which uh, typically requires again, some user interaction, but for the actual pairing, then no user interaction is required. Not a lot of details at this point. Uh, Android and Linux patches are available. Uh, Apple patches appear to be not yet available to fix uh, this vulnerability. So we'll see if Apple will release something. And I mentioned this 
came up sort of at the uh, dog park conversation because uh, the person there uh, was working in a healthcare setting and basically they only allow wired keyboards, which uh, sounds like a solid solution uh, for uh, this uh, problem in order to avoid any kind of impersonation or eavesdropping of wireless signals. And then there are two additional vulnerabilities I want to mention at least. Uh, one is CVE 2023-35618. This is a sandbox escape vulnerability affecting Edge and a patch is available. Remember, Microsoft updates Edge outside of the normal sort of patch Tuesday cycle, which of course comes up this week. And then we have a CVE 2023-6248. This affects the Cyrus for IoT gateway. Apparently, this is used frequently in vehicles and would allow code execution. Well, uh, this is it for today. Uh, thanks for listening and talk to you again tomorrow. If you see me here at uh, CDI, I usually carry some stickers around with me. I'm also supposed to give a talk sometimes this week. I'll probably announce this uh, separately uh, forgot right now what the exact day is. Uh, thanks and talk to you again tomorrow. Bye.